Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, as it may be. This presentation is called Kin Recognition and Systems of Ancestry, Part 2, Unilineal Descent. And our goal in this presentation is to answer two questions. One, what is descent? And two, what are the main forms of descent? So we've talked about bilateral affiliation, and that's one of the basic systems of ancestry. Descent is the second basic system. And in this presentation, we're going to focus just on descent. So we're going to define descent as using shared ancestry to form corporate social groups. We'll discuss the meaning of a corporate social group in the next presentation. When a corporate social group is formed by descent, we call it a corporate descent group. And that's just a corporate group that recruits members based on shared ancestry. Now, unilineal descent is the primary form in which this occurs. So unilineal descent is very important. And by unilineal, we mean via one gender. However, despite the fact that unilineal descent proceeds by only one gender, it takes two forms. And when we ask, well, why would that be? Why would there be two forms of unilineal descent? The answer, of course, is two genders. One form of unilineal descent is called patrilineal descent. And here's an animation of that. In this animation, the triangles represent males. And if you watch this go through a couple times here, you can see that wherever patrilineal descent reaches a daughter, it includes her, but it stops with her. And wherever patrilineal descent reaches a son, it continues through that son. So another way to think of this is that priority is given to paternity in systems of patrilineal descent. This may seem puzzling, actually, given how difficult it can be to determine paternity, but it's actually the most common system found in human societies. One area where this was very common was in the Mediterranean, and a metaphor throughout the Mediterranean area equates the father's sperm to seed from which the child is grown, and the mother's womb then is simply the soil in which the seed is planted, and this gives the majority of the substance of the child over to the father. But basically, you're the product of your father's seed, and your mother is just where it that seed happens to grow and be planted. If you want to learn more about that, a really good ethnography on it is called The Seed in the Soil, and that looks at patrilineal descent in Turkey. The result of patrilineal descent in terms of a corporate descent group is called a patrilineage, and this chart shows a patrilineage. If we look at this chart, all of the individuals marked in blue belong to the patrilineage of ego, who's at the center of it, and put yourself in ego's shoes in thinking about this. But this question arises if we look over in the lower right-hand corner, and this is the question, 25 is female, but she belongs to the same patrilineage as ego, whereas 28 is male, but 28 does not. They're both cousins of ego. So the question is, why is 25 a member of ego's patrilineage, but 28 is not? Well, one answer to this is that a daughter belongs to her father's patriline, and of course a son does as well, but her children will follow her husband's patriline. So the reason why Ego's parallel cousin, and we'll explain that 
in the next week. The reason why she belongs to the same patrilineage is that she joins the patrilineage of her father, but her children would follow those of her husband. And if we go back and look at that again then, what we see is that 18 appear on this chart is female and that means that 27 and 28 are going to follow her husband's patrilineage. So the daughter belongs to her father's patriline. Her children follow her husband. Daughters follow their father. But this assumes lineage exogamy, and that's not always the case. Now what we mean by exogamy is outmarriage. And if there's lineage exogamy, it means that you marry outside of your lineage. Endogamy means in marriage, and some lineages around the world and some corporate descent groups are endogamous. And in that case, the conventions that govern our charts don't hold. So it's important to recognize in interpreting these charts that they're based on certain conventions, and one of those is lineage exogamy. You're marrying outside of your own descent group. Matrilineal descent can help us look at this again. So a matrilineal descent formally is just the reverse of patrilineal descent. The circles are female. And in this case, whenever matrilineal descent reaches a son, it stops with him. Whereas whenever matrilineal descent reaches the daughter, it flows through her and continues. The result of this is a matrilineage. And this shows the matrilineage of ego, who's female in this chart. We could also use a male ego and show a matrilineage. But again, if we look over in the left-hand corner, we have this distinction between two types of cousins. And we can pose this question, why is 22 Eagle's male cousin a member of his matrilineage while 19, who is a female cousin, is not? And the answer here is just as with patrilineal descent, it has to do with the gender of their parent. So 14 is female, and so the line flows on through her to her daughter and her son, whereas 13 is Mel, and so the line stops with 13. And this points up a key thing to note. We often think about patrilineal and matrilineal as meaning mother's side and father's side, but that's not really accurate. If it were accurate, again, we have this question, why 19 and 20 are not included in the matrilineage? They're on the mother's side, but they're not matrilineal kin. And again, this has to do with the fact that because it's matrilineal, 13's children will derive their lineage identity from their mother, and that means 19 and 20 belong to their mother's matrilineage and not to uh, ego's mother's brother, uh, number 13. So let's summarize. Unilineal means via one gender. There's two basic forms of unilineal descent, patrilineal and matrilineal. And this again shows four generations of males. There really aren't uh, much in the way of patrilineages in the modern West, um, but you can still have patrilines. Unilineal descent groups also come in two forms. Patrilineal descent groups that we call patrilineages or patriclans, and matrilineal descent groups that we call matrilineages or matriclans. And we'll discuss those more in the next presentation. Thank you for listening.